Nokia's $300 mini PC that promises licensed Windows 11 Pro, loads of ports, an ultra-compact design and performance that supposedly rivals much pricier systems. Sounds too good to be true? Well, let's expect. Hi, so good to meet you. I'm Michael and... Well, this t-shirt makes my skin look as if I've spent quite a lot of time on the beach this summer. Well, not the case, unfortunately. But I'm back here to present to you uh, some interesting tech. And this is a mini computer coming from Geekcom, the model IT12, the 2025 variation, because throughout the last couple of years, there have been a few refreshes of this portfolio. And I've been testing it for a while. It's even up and running at the moment. Therefore, in the next few minutes, I'm going to cover everything important about it. We'll talk about performance, the gaming experience, the power in the cooling, the power efficiency, connectivity, and even we're going to touch base on topics such as repairability and upgrades. And in the end, I'm going to talk about everything that impressed me and everything that didn't. Some performance testing as a starter, which honestly went beyond my initial expectations. The Intel Core i5-12450H is now about three and a half years old, but here in 2025 it's still considered one of the best value processors in its class about performance. Of course, it isn't the latest Core Ultra or a high-end Core i9, but for a fraction of the price you get roughly 70% of the performance of the newest flagship chips. Just to put it into perspective, the CPU alone on the Core Ultra 9 laptop could cost more than this entire Geekcom IT12 package. The benchmarks confirm the story. The signed bench scores are excellent and 3D mark results show stable multi-core performance. Everyday tasks like browsing, office work, video streaming or light editing run perfectly smoothly. Gaming, however, is where you're gonna need to manage expectations. This model is powered by the Intel UHD graphics, which predates the Iris XE generation, which means that you shouldn't expect high frame rates in AAA games, if at all. Still, I was pleasantly surprised. Counter-Strike 2 is playable at Full HD with low settings, and Formula 1 2024 also runs decently with reduced graphics. For casual gaming, it works, but don't expect more than 40 to 50 frames per second in Full HD. Technically, there is a workaround. Thanks to the USB 4 port, you can connect an external GPU. It removes some of the compact convenience, but it's a realistic way to turn this little box into a budget gaming rig. The design and the build quality are impressive for a budget system. The unboxing experience is positive. Geekcom prints the exact configuration on the packaging, and you can choose from different variants with other CPUs and with more memory. The IT12 itself is very small, especially compared to most other mini PCs. The number of ports is generous though, two USB-A and an audio jack on the front, and more on the back, including two USB 4 ports, which is a huge deal at this price. There's also a Kensington lock slot, making it suitable for business environments, and an SD card reader on the side. You can even hide it behind your monitor with the VESA mount included. The power adapter is compact as well, which adds to the portability. Inside, the layout is neat, just be extra careful with the disassembly process. Access is simple, the components are aligned well, and you're gonna find Lexar RAM and what posit NVMe SSD in my unit. Both the memory and the storage can be upgraded, and the Wi-Fi card is replaceable too. In fact, everything except the CPU and the motherboard is easily serviceable. Let's dig deeper about the specs. On paper, the IT12 supports up to 64GB of DDR4 memory, up to four 4K display outputs, comes with Windows 11 Professional Edition pre-installed, the cooling system is designed to keep the performance steady, and Geekcom includes a three-year warranty to this particular model. This reminds me of one golden rule that we very often apply when we are picking a new smartphone, because yes, new smartphones, especially those entry-level models, which are carrying the latest and greatest from the tech, are sometimes in the long run not as good as if you buy a decent mid-ranger or even a flagship from, let's say, two years ago. And in the long run, the older device might serve you better. And with computers and x86 architecture, given its very slow pace of development in the past few years, 
it makes even better sense to buy something slightly older but definitely good. And that's the case with the processor inside. And I think now we should talk about the storage. My unit includes a 512 gig NVMe SSD, runs on PCI Express Generation 3, but the slot supports Generation 4 drives up to 2 terabytes. There's also an additional M2 SATA slot and even a 2.5 inch drive bay. That last one is very rare in mini PCs these days and gives you the option to expand storage affordably with a large SSD or HDD. The stock drive is slightly QLC-based, it's excellent for reading tasks, but sustained write performance is a bit slower, still, for everyday use, you probably wouldn't notice. Connectivity is strong, but not perfect. I would have liked to see a second LAN port, but the single port included here runs at 2.5 gigs, which is a nice upgrade over the typical 1 gigabit ports found in most budget mini PCs. Wi-Fi reception is solid as well, and the wireless adapter seems to maintain stable signal even when I'm far from the router or there are walls in between. A very current wireless standard supported as well. The cooling performance is excellent, on the other hand, even when set to performance mode, the ID12 remains quiet, temperatures stay under control and I rarely observed any throttling. At idle, the fans are almost silent. Under heavy load you're gonna hear them, but they are far from annoying. Definitely not the jet engine effect that some other mini PCs produce. If you're looking for simplicity, then let's check the BIOS. It's limited to basic security and boot settings. There are no overclocking options or advanced tuning features. On the bright side, you can't mess up the system by changing something that you don't understand. Now, going beyond the BIOS and exploring the software, I want to address an old concern related to this particular model. Early batches of the ID12 series were rumored to ship with malware. This is not the case with the 2025 release that I tested. Still, to be safe, always buy from an official source. And if you want maximum peace of mind, keep your Windows license key and reinstall the operating system cleanly. But yeah, as it looks like, this distribution of Windows 11 Pro is perfectly fine. But like with any other tech product, there might be some drawbacks. If DDR5 memory is a priority for you, this system won't satisfy you. Gaming is limited due to the older graphics adapter, NVMe drive capacity tops out at just 2 terabytes, there is no full-size DisplayPort connector, and I do wish there was a second LAN port. These are not deal breakers, but are worth keeping in mind before buying. As a whole, the Geekom ID12 represents a very safe choice at a very safe price. And even though the CPU inside my unit dates back to the early days of 2022, it shows extremely relevant performance to the 2025 standards. The rest of the components are either perfectly fine or even very well future-proof as well. Therefore, for just above $300, it is one of the best opportunities to catch one of the last DDR4 trains. And that's my opinion about the ID12, and I'll be really curious to read about yours. Do you feel that buying a really decent system with a slightly older CPU makes good sense now in 2025, or you prefer to go for the latest and greatest, despite the fact it's going to come with an entry-level CPU setup? Let's talk about this in the comment section below the video. As usual, your kind support is greatly appreciated. You can hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more cool tech inspections. And I, Michael, the Tech Mishka, invite you to come back in a few days' time to see more cool deck inspections. Have a great day. Bye.